All right, I think we're good. Hey guys, Retro Gaming Maniac here, back finally with another episode of the Retro Code Podcast here with Radical Reggie. How's it going, everyone? It's been a long time, it's, and uh, it's been several months. Yes, it has. <laughs> we were trying to do a, a maybe a once a week schedule, but our schedules in our lives uh, had a different plan for us. So we're sorry about that. Yeah, we're back and uh, we're ready to talk with you guys. So man, this is going to be awesome. I'm very excited about this episode. Yeah, I enjoy doing these. It's a uh... Hopefully we can try to keep it <laughs> keep people going more if, often. If we can. They're very relaxing and it's like kind of like a, a like a way to vent and kind of like you know maybe like a vlog or something like that. I don't know. It's, it feels really good to do videos like this. You know, requires minimal editing, thankfully, so you don't go crazy. Exactly. But uh, we get to talk to people and talk about what's going on currently. Yeah, yeah. YouTube, Is there, and gaming, and all that stuff. So, so, so we're, we're actually live right now. Yep, we are live. Live. We got Krillin wow. in the house. Krillin is my main man. He's always here when I do a live video, man. He's got my back. I love Krillin. Yeah, he shows up all the time for mine, too. He's a good dude. He, he was a big help when it came to getting the computer, too. Him and Alex, man. Well, everybody was, but you know, they were one of the first ones that tried to help us get that computer ship. Yeah, that so that computer, was very man, cool. Was, the shipping on that thing was ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, that scared the crap out of FedEx. It was like, oh, <laughs> 80, 80 bucks. What? Yeah. Like, never mind. <laughs> oh, my God. So, so in so, this video, guys, we've got a few things we want to talk about. We're going to just kind of play it by ear, but we've got um, pickups we want to show you. you want to, we want to talk about games we're playing now. Uh, we also want to talk about um, what's going on with uh, YouTube here recently. You mm. know, we got a bunch of things. We also have a debate we're going to do about disc versus cartridge. Oh, yeah. That's going to be fun. <laughs> yep. So we've got a few people in the house. We've got Krillin, Lisa, and Seto the White Dragon. The White Dragon, nice dude. Yeah. Uh, he's the white. He's the White Dragon from Lunar, or Yu-Gi-Oh. Oh, Yu-Gi-Oh has a dragon too. Yeah, Blue Eyes White Dragon. But he, is he as cool as is, is Quirk from freaking uh, uh, Lunar? That dragon? Never seen it. Oh, well, you should play that game someday. Maybe I will. Wait, wait uh, Lunar. <laughs> lunar, the first Lunar. PS One. PS One. The first dragon you meet is Quirk, and he's like he's an old ass dragon too. Is he? But uh, yeah. Lunar has a weird storyline because the, the the dragons, they're 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 like a, they're what's the word I'm looking for like myst, mystic beast or whatever, right? Mm -hmm. So when a dragon takes a dump, in that game, it's actually a diamond. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Cool. So people are yeah, it's like whoa, all right, dude. Well, I wish we had dragons. Yeah, I know that'd be awesome. Everybody'd be rich. <laughs> <laughs> But um, cool, man. So I want to let everybody know I can't see the questions right now. So Josh is the only one who can see them. I will try to grab a cell phone as well during our podcast and see if I can see questions. But if not, I can't see the questions. So sorry about that. Yeah, I'll try to relay. We got George uh, Arias is here. He says, hey, vintage PC. Uh, George, says, man, is, is my main man. He's missing too, man. He's been missing in action for like last year on me. I hope yeah. everything's all right, George. Love you, man. We got somebody gonna, vintage PC from the UK is watching. Vintage, oh, vintage PC from the UK, man! I always wanted to go to the UK someday. Yeah. One day. Yeah, one day. There we go. So, what have you been playing lately, Reggie? Well, today I got through playing Bleed Part One. My buddy Nick is here, and he's playing oh, Resident Evil Revelations yeah. uh, on the Switch, which is, looks really good. Uh, he's having a fun. He's having fun playing that. He's quiet over there. I'll give you a little look at Nick over there. So what's up, Nick? There you what's go. Up, dude? Hell yeah. Buddy Nick in there. Does All Nick right. have a YouTube channel? Nick does not have a YouTube channel because he's what? so damn busy. But he, he, he always appears on my channel, and he's also appeared on the Metal Jesus channel. Really? So you can check out. Yeah. When Jason did his arcade video, Nick was in that. So it was pretty badass. That's cool. I think I remember watching he, that video. I got it. That was a while back, though, wasn't it? Yeah, it was, it was about to back. Almost, maybe almost a year ago. I didn't have my car. So... <laughs> Yeah, that's a while ago. But uh, yeah, so I'm very excited. We're gonna talk about some. We're gonna first. We're gonna show you guys some pickups. Yeah. Uh, we want to knock those out, and then we're gonna go into some more details about cartridge versus CD, uh, the YouTube crisis that happened. Yeah. Uh, a lot of cool stuff. So, anyways, uh, Josh, because you are the retro gaming maniac, the, the channel that everybody should be watching. <laughs> you get to start first. Okay. Well, pickups. So. Now, the last episode of the RetroCo podcast we did was, like, several months ago, right? So, since yeah, then, I've gotten a Switch. So, I'm not going to show the system, but I've gotten a Switch, and I've got a few games for it. Now, I can show you one game at a time, or I can just show you the ones I have, as far as Switch games go. 
Uh, it's up to you. I mean, it's, I'm, I'm, I got all the time in the world. You, you, you don't want to have to work in the morning, I think, right? <laughs> yeah. Three thirty. Yeah. Three thirty. All right. Well, I'll go ahead and go then. Skyrim Woo. on the Switch. How many versions of Skyrim do you have? Three. No. Three. PS3, Switch, PC. All right. All right. We got Xenoverse 2. Okay. Cool. Mario Kart 8. Mario Kart 8. Okay. Mario Kart 8, excuse me. It's fun. Doom. Good old Doom, huh? Yeah, it's fun, man. Yeah, uh, you have this version, cool. right? No, I, I watched Jason play it. He was really enjoying it when I went to his house one day. Yeah. On the Switch? He was playing it on the PS4. Oh, but, yeah, uh, okay. Vintage PC says uh, you and Metal Jesus got him into uh, collecting games. So. Ask Vintage PC, does he collect them or does he play them too? Because uh, there's a difference between uh, collecting and being a gamer as well. That's true. You know, we should talk about that too. But uh, I'm glad he, I'm glad we inspired him. L.A. Nor. Yep. I don't know why you got the Switch version because it takes up so much space. It's fun, dude. I love that game. Yeah, but why did you play it on the PS4 where it has, like, Zelda? Okay, you got Zelda, <laughs> Wind Waker, of course. But uh, L.A. Noir, man, it's like, because it takes up, you get the, you, the game's on the car, and then it has to download itself to the uh, the memory, which is like 40 gigs or something, isn't it? Or um, It was I don't know. 21 or 14 gigs or something like that. Yeah, man. I mean, do you have a, do you have a memory card for your, your Switch that's big? I have a 32 gig memory card so so that game takes the majority of your your room on that card yeah oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. that one and uh xenoverse takes up a good bit of room so nintendo should have thought that one out man but it's all good so i guess since you sold your switch stuff it's my turn to show something yep. off right it is your turn i got claire from limited run games uh claire is a survival horror game think of resident evil i mean think of silent hill if it was a 2d side scrolling game very weird waking up in different situations not knowing what's going on it's, it's pretty crazy yeah. uh very very cool game i'm glad i got a physical release because this is the type of indie titles i like to have physical releases for i'm a big survival horror fan you are too josh oh, yeah. you know what i'm talking about nice okay all right well this is one one of the all-time greats had to get it complete in box oh lord 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 oh golden eye 007, does that game, are the controls still, do the controls still feel good to this day? No. <laughs> they're, they're, they're horrible. Yeah. Controls gotta, are horrible. Yeah. It's definitely playable, but it's a big adjustment because we're used to like yeah. two analog sticks. So, um, it, I heard you it, can uh, actually plug in two, two controllers and do like dual analog sticks with it. So. Oh, really? On one player. I, I'm always wondering, I'm wondering if, uh, well, because Nintendo's going to eventually come out with the N64 classic, I think. Yeah, I wonder if they'll use the original controller model for that instead of like doing something like a newer model, better controller for 64. Yeah, so maybe they'll go with the Hori version. I don't know, but I always wonder that. Okay, so next item I'm going to show here, which people have seen on my channel before, I got the Retro Trio Plus, awesome. which is which is a good system. Uh, plays uh, Super Nintendo, uh, Fam Super, well, I think Super Famicom. I can't remember. I didn't tell you Super Famicom, but Genesis, Super Nintendo, NES, uh, Repro games. Uh, has a, a PAL switch on here for Genesis games. I got to get a PAL P Super Nintendo game to work on it, but it didn't work at the time. But it does play them because my buddy John Riggs played PAL games on here. Yeah. Uh, very cool system. The sound sounds good for the Genesis games. Uh, got some lag. Uh -oh. Having a Retro on 5 because go. it's more reliable when it comes to playing games. Yeah. So still good. Yeah, uh, we had some lag, so. Okay, because if we lag, I'll pause and we'll just keep, you know, we'll wait a little bit. Yeah. So let's, Are we um, good to go now? Let's see if we have any questions real quick, so. Um, okay, Retro Trio, guys. Retro Trio is awesome. Let's see. Let's see, we got Elvis Roa. He wants to know if you ever got the PS4 Pro or just have the original. Um, Elvis got the original and I would have got the pro so as much as I would like to upgrade, I'm not gonna go into that that, that uh that method of buying a, a newer system just because they put it out with poor I mean with a new 
a better a better system. I just can't keep going with that. That's like cell phones. Yeah, you know, then systems will start home consoles will start doing it. And it's not. I mean, so uh, it's not a huge upgrade to me, if you ask me. I mean, unless you have like a 4K TV, I mean, you might be able to see a little bit of difference, but it's not like huge difference, you know. Um, DOA Hitman says hello. Uh oh, I think we're froze, Reggie. We're losing Reggie, y'all. He'll be back. I think we started to lag. Yeah, we're lagging. Oh, there you okay. are. Okay. Sort of. Okay, cool. I was actually we'll keep it paused until like it gets fixed. I just <laughs> turned off all my internet connection stuff, so to make sure this is good to go. Okay. So cool. sorry about that, folks. You know. I got the poor internet connection on my side over here. It lags sometimes. Yeah, but uh what's up Weedsmith93? Weedsmith. <laughs> All right. Uh I guess I'm next, right? You're next. How about that? Gundam Breaker 2. I give it two toes down. You what? Two toes down. Two toes down. Two Not toes. even two thumbs down. Two Have toes down, man. No, that's why I haven't that's why I give it two thumbs down. It's Japanese import too. I hear I hear it's a really good game though, man. Where'd you pick it up from? Um, there's this little retro game store, um close to one of the facilities I work at. Um and yeah. I went in there while we were waiting one day and uh they had two import games. They had this one and another Gundam game called Gundam Something Destiny, but it looked really like story driven. And it was in Japanese, mm -hmm. so I just kind of stayed away from it. But um, this seems more like a fighting game more than anything, so it looks kind of cool. So. Okay, okay, cool, cool. All right, so you're up now. Oh, uh, a fan sent me a, a cool game, and I was very happy. He knew, he knew I like Game Boy games. He sent me a sealed Frogger's Adventures 2 for the Game Boy, which nice. is a good uh, side-scrolling game. Well, kind of like a not well, uh, more of a top-down platformer. Yeah, it's, it's it's Frogger, but he's back better than ever. And uh, have you seen it before? No. Yeah, Frogger is pretty cool. So yeah, Frogger too, man. I mean, they they were trying to bring Frogger back in the early two thousands, and you know, it's they, way more of like a platformer in this. Yeah, they did it with some style. They gave they didn't give him any toot or anything like that, but it's just cool to say, hey, Frogger, I remember him back when I was not born, or you know, whatever you, I remember, you remember Frogger. Well, <laughs> <laughs> with Frogger, I got that on Game Boy Advance. I still haven't broken the seal on it. Do you need this still? No. You want it? I'll take it, because I have it. I have a case for it if you need it. I'll take the case. I think I have some, but let me just make sure those are the same. Okay. I, I, I recently sold a Gargoyle, I mean, Gar Demon's Crest for the Super Nintendo. Yeah. And I had it in a custom case, and my buddy Nick was asking me if I wanted it, and I said, no, I don't, I don't need that anymore. So, yeah. I've yeah. got one here in a custom case, actually. You have Demon's Crest? Yeah, right here. Oh, yeah, that's the same custom case we use. Yeah, exactly. Yep. <laughs> So cool, man. Yeah, I just sold that game. I mean, it's still here. I have to ship it off. But yeah, my here favorite is, my... is Gargoyles Quest 2 on the NES. I got to ship this off soon. Tomorrow, actually. All right, so guys, I, uh... just to let you know, um, Reggie can't see your comment, so I'm going to try to relay everything you say to him. So I apologize if I miss something and we don't respond. Um... I have another phone here somewhere. I just don't know where it's at. I heard it earlier. Let's see. Cause I can use my other cell phone to look at questions too. Um, Hidden Tape wants to know if we ever played Fahrenheit on the original Xbox. Uh, Fahrenheit uh, 90, Fahrenheit uh, the one uh, Indigo Prophecy. I don't know. It yeah, it's, called, it's, don't it's know. Indigo Prophecy. Uh, it's called Fahrenheit in other places. Uh, yes, I have played it, and I love that game. That was the one of David Cage's uh, breakthrough games. Yeah, that's it. Yep good game <laughs> it's called it's called it's called fahrenheit in other countries and also it, had, it, had a, it doesn't have a, a edited sex scene because there's a sex scene in that game that's heavily edited in america oh, really? but yeah i guess it's kind of weird seeing that scene in like ps2 graphics because it's like you know it's like they're not real models moving around and just <laughs> sees robot you know what i mean like you're yeah. like oh you know like kind of like how everybody remember how everybody used to get a boner for the freaking Tomb Raider, uh, the Nude Raider, because they thought Laura Croft was hot, but I was like, how could that be hot, dude? That's like pixelated. That's not even a real woman. Yeah, exactly. 
but these guys got got wood for that, so I was like, oh, okay, whatever. But uh, yeah, so is it my turn now? I think it's my or turn. Your turn. Go ahead, go ahead, man. Sorry, All right. I'll trail off. Shante for Davida, yes, very good. Comes with soundtrack. Comes with uh, what else? It comes with soundtrack and anything else? I think it comes with the game, the soundtrack, manual. There's a soundtrack. Yes, good job. And the game. That's all it comes with. And the manual, I guess, is in the actual case, but I haven't. Okay. I haven't got a chance to try it out yet. So. Okay. Cool. Cool. So happy that you got that for a cheap price still because it's going to okay. raise in price. They're re-releasing it for the Switch, and it's supposed to have the DLC content on there, but I don't think it's worth it if you already have the original version. Yeah, I mean, they're going to charge like 50, 60 bucks, I'm sure. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not buying that anymore. If they get, When the game gets comes out like that, and they don't give me the whole game, pretty much, I mean, I'll just keep my base model. I mean, playing as Shantae is what I play the game for anyway, so any other extra characters would be nice, but I'm not going to buy into their method of stuff like that so we got a fluffy gamer in the house he says what's up margie i think he fluffy Reggie. fluffy is a, a Mar- one of marcus's good friends too and and mine too uh fluffy say hard say hi to marcus man <laughs> uh i always tell him that we got uh george arius just donated a dollar yeah, let's make sure i got everything I need. what's up Josh? So george george donated a dollar george who arius George, man, you know George is always looking out for me, man. He, he donated a dollar for us. That's awesome, dude. Uh, That's awesome. Are you about George Arias? Huh? Who's George talking about? No, George uh, on my on my YouTube, uh, one of my YouTube, on my Facebook. He's one of my we friends got... on Facebook. What's his last name? A- 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 Andreas, like in- Arias. Arias, yeah. Yeah, sorry. yeah. No, he that guy. He's liked ever since we did some videos together, and I have a friend on on Facebook, and he like I he's always active on my Facebook and stuff. Oh, oh cool, because he because he, he uh George he, he lifts the weights and everything too, so very yeah. very cool guy. Sorry, super, we didn't mean to trail nice off, guys, guy. but George is a, re- a really cool guy, man. He's a, he's he he lifts the weights, you know. He's taking care of business if he's in life. Watching this, I see when you like my post, bro. <laughs> I see you. Nick says he sees he sees you when you like his post, cool uh, George. We've so got awesome. Media Glitch, Joel, in the house. He said he, he wants to be a guest on the podcast one day. I think that would be awesome. Oh, that'd be great. Our next podcast. Matter of fact, we're, uh, we're announcing it now. Joel will be on the next podcast. Heck yeah, man. Um, get in touch with us about the time, though. Uh, you know. Yeah, because so, it fluctuates. So we're like, yeah, oh, we'll try to make it happen. 9 o'clock. Sure. Uh, that would be we're awesome. Not sure. Okay, uh, I guess it's my turn. Now, I'm, I'm trying to show different stuff that I've shown on the recent Metal Jesus video. So, uh, okay. Inside and Limbo, uh, Ooh, two Limbo games in good. one. Yeah. I got this for uh, around 10 bucks because I had some store credit at GameStop. Yeah. And uh, I, I picked it up, and I actually beat Inside. These are the type of games that once you start playing them, you can't put them down. So, I actually beat Inside. I got the gross ending, but uh, I beat the game, so I'm happy about that. And then Limbo I played years ago. I never beat it, but my nephew did, so definitely worth picking up two games on a disc. You see, look, even comes with some kind of, not a manual, but it comes with a, a sticker, so yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, I know, right? You can talk, man. Oh, oh I was probably about to roll out, brother. Nick, you're out of here, man? Yeah. Always good seeing you. Hey, guys, my buddy Nick is out of here. All right, Nick. Go, Nick. See y'all. See you, Hopefully dude. there's another episode of Best Friend Show Gem soon. We're going to see the episode of Best Friend Show Gem soon, so yeah, cool, man. Good to see you, Josh. See you, dude. Have a good one. Take care, brother. All you right, too. man. All right, Nick. I'll catch you later, Take brother. Take care, homie. Thanks again for the controller, man. Yeah, no problem, man. I'll see you soon. Yep. Next Saturday. All right, man. We'll see. Marcus. Don't pull a bin on me. I ain't All right. <laughs> <laughs> All so right, guys. 61 people. I'm going to answer some questions real quick for the next uh, pickup video. Um, let's see. Or for the next <laughs> next, next, the next turn, yeah. 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 Um, let's see. Connor says Limbo is great. Jago Man says, let's see, excellent. Okay, cool. It looks like most most of everybody's just talking to amongst each other. That's cool. Um, okay, give me one second, guys. I'm gonna grab my other phone. All right. Well, while Reggie uh, does that, if you have anything you want to talk about, any questions or anything, I saw a question here. Can you recommend any good? PS4 games. Um, depends on what you like. 
I like horror games. So there's one on the PS4. What is the name of that one? Where is it? Where is it at? Where is it at? It's one on the PS4. It's kind of like an indie game. It's called Colot. Let me grab it for you. Um, don't know if you have it yet or not, but I'll show it to you. Okay, so I got two games to recommend. Colot. It's a. I cannot find that phone. Survival but horror game takes place in like a winter setting. And. Sorry guys, I don't want to be looking for my phone during this podcast. Oh, you're good. Oh, assault, assault suit, man. Lioness or lioness or something like that. Yeah. Twenty bucks, right? Yep. Brand new. Yeah. It's, there uh, you go. What is it? It's like uh, Target Earth, but remade, right? Yeah, it's a remake of Target Earth. Pretty badass. A uh, hard game, but you know, got to use those old school skills. Oh yeah. Uh, let's see. What's our thoughts on Nintendo sixty four Mission Impossible? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think much about it. I never played it, but I've seen it played, and I was like, Ugh, that game's impossible. Um, Joel from Media Glitch wants to know if you like the new Undernight in birth. Yeah, Joel, I love the game, man. I was playing it last night, beat the game with the main character. Uh, it seems to be an upgrade of the original version, so it's not really a sequel, just an upgraded version. I like how it has tutorial mode so people can learn how to play it. But, uh, I found out when I played that game that my online compatibility for that game is terrible. Like, I tried to play with some friends last night. I, got, I kept getting kicked out. And maybe it's just my internet last night. I don't know, but I was feeling bad. But I love the game. We're going to have a battle soon. But it, it might be good that we don't battle so I don't beat you. So there's that. No, I was kidding. <laughs> but, yeah, um, I, I love the game, Joel. DOA Hitman wants to know what PS4 games you would recommend. Anything? Mm hmm uh, <laughs> Tekken good. 7. Huh? There's a lot that I, I don't know how to recommend. I mean, Horizon Zero Dawn definitely is a game I would recommend to somebody. You know, I, I love haven't that game. played that one yet. You have it? You have it? Nope. Uh, oh, it's good you waited. You can get the complete version with the DLC on the disc. Exactly. It's embedded on the disc. So exactly. No DLC. Yeah, I know, right? Um, Level Up wants to know if we've tried Monster Hunter World yet. Um, I haven't tried it. I have not. I missed the the download code for it when it was a demo, and I just didn't. I have so many games to play, and I'm out of space on my PS4. It's like I'm very picky when it comes to games I'm going to play. All right, I got a good question here from uh, Electric Maestro or Maestro. What's a game that you felt had a great original idea but had poor execution to the point that it warrants a remake? So a game that had a good idea but um, they just didn't execute it very well, and now they, you know. What's one you think might need to be remade? Uh, Putting you on the spot. I, I, it's just hard to think of something like that really fast because there's, there's so many games out there yeah. that could have had poor execution that should be remade. Uh, Friday the 13th, poor execution when it was launched. It's barely a game. Yeah. Uh, dude, there's this, man, there's this other YouTuber out there, guys. His name is his name is uh, Hiki Kimura. Uh, and he just... And his name is Miles, man. I've been binge watching his videos like all weekend. That's an amazing channel. If you guys have, well, I know it's kind of hard to find a channel. It's called Hickey Kimura, so I, people won't know how to spell that. But and that guy has an awesome channel, man. You guys gotta check it out. I just thought I'd mention that right now randomly. But <laughs> it's called Hickey Kimura. Hickey Kimura, and uh, it's a it's an awesome channel. Dude. You guys will love it. It's funny. I mean, the guy. I mean, the guy. He 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 has he's. Anybody who wears boating shoes is pretty cool with me, man. I mean, if boating shoes are in style, man. That's that's what I'm talking about. He's a good guy. But as far as to answer your question, bro, Friday the Thirteenth, the game was a game I think it should have been. Uh, it should have got maybe one day get re-released as a better game because there's, it just it was too much of not of a, of a full game when it was first released. Three maps. Uh, it just uh, that doesn't even sound right. No offline mode. It was, you know, it was just it was terrible. But you know. I don't know what they went through to make that to put it together with the money. I don't know how to process. So. Hope that answers your question. Sorry. I tried to find oh, it, but I can't figure yeah. out how to spell it. So. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. I, and I don't have access to my other phone right now. So, but uh, but it's a good channel if you could, if you can find it. Hickey Kimura. It's uh, it's great. 
All right. So, any more questions that we can answer real fast? Uh, let's see. Uh, if official eighty three. He says, "Hey, Ray G, I'm thinking about getting a PS Vita TV. Besides being yeah. able to play Vita games on the TV, are there any other cool things about it?" Uh, it's it's basically a Vita on your television, so it's a Vita can... with a very limited um, well compatibility. Yeah, it's about I would say. Would you say give or take is around seventy five to eighty percent compatibility with most games? Is now that good? it is. When it first came out, most of the games were not compatible. But now it seems mm-hmm. like every time they make a new Vita game, even if it's from a small developer, they mm-hmm. make sure it's a PS Vita TV compatible. So that's good. Yeah. Uh, it's worth getting. Uh, you can mod it. They'll they'll come out. They'll eventually come out with better mods for it where it'll play everything. But it's a good investment to have. So. Uh, Get a 64 big 64 gig memory card or 32 one, and you're good to go. I think it's a great investment. I have four Vita TVs. And the reason I have four is because I have the variants, but I love that system, man. It's just cool. To me, like now, I got one, and I was kind of like split on it because it was a lot of the games I wanted to play was not compatible. But um, mm-hmm. I did a mod just by watching a YouTube video. Did an easy mod, and uh, now that I have it modded, I can play any Vita game. And right. also, I've got a Super Nintendo emulator on it, so I can actually play like Super Nintendo games on my Vita TV. That is cool, man. And and the Vita, when you mod it, do you have that? Does that have to be online when you when you're playing games? Uh, like, no. does it be connected? To, well, does it be connected or anything? No, but you can still go on the PlayStation Store, and it, it tricks Sony into thinking that you're not using a custom like setup. Right. Enough. But uh, sometimes you can get caught and they'll ban your account. And then you'll be offline. But you can still play. It'll just be offline. So. Oh, that's fine. I I would uh I wouldn't buy anything from the store anyway. But I I, I want to mod my system. Uh, one of them at least, so I can like play everything. It, yeah. it would be nice to do a video on a game like Silent Hill: Book of Memories, like capturing footage or playing like like we did when we played that or uh, Uncharted: Golden Abyss. So, oh yeah. You know. So. Uh-huh. Uh, one What's more up? question from Chum Nasty seven seven seven. Chum Nasty. <laughs> Chum Nasty. Okay. He says, "With the popularity of the Switch, do we think Sony will release a new handheld relatively soon?" No, I think Sony uh, is kind of like they don't really, they're not really following Nintendo. I mean, they, they they dropped the ball with the Vita, and I think they know that. I would love to see them come out with a portable system, but I don't see it happening. Uh, they might make something cooler with their new PlayStation system. But I don't see it happening. I don't know. I just don't see it. Yeah. Um, Sony doesn't have any reason to do that right now. Yeah, they're doing fine. Their PS4 is selling so well. They don't. They have no reason to feel worried about you know having to release something because even you know now Switch is catching up though. So we'll see maybe in another year or two, at least another mm-hmm. year where the Switch is at sales wise, and we'll see if that lights a fire under Sony to try to do something portable like that. But I think I think Sony is looking for the release probably in the PS5 probably maybe sometime 2020 21. Yeah. So I think it'll be good, but we'll see. Yeah. Uh, okay, so I still have one more another game. I think it's my turn. I got a Tekken Seven. Uh, nice. A friend of mine sent sent this to me. Hooked it up. Thank you so much. Uh, I yeah, didn't have the awesome. game. Yeah, and, and my buddy got it on sale too, which is even even better so he hooked me up with this and i beat it last night i couldn't beat uh i couldn't beat the special mode when you play as double kazuya versus akuma it's just way too hard but fun game though or maybe i'm just getting old i don't okay. it's too hard but uh yeah so i've got one here and this guy's going crazy he wants us to answer his question acid pea all right <laughs> wings or nuggets i like wings oh, i like i actually like nuggets better what do you what do you like Wings take more; t- they're, easy, they're tougher to, to eat because you have to kind of bite around and you know all that. So it's kind of exactly. it's re- more rewarding. They're juicier; yep. it's more rewarding. So there, okay, cool. I'll stop answer, asking that question. <laughs> Dragon Ball Z Fighters, Dragon Ball Fighters, or is that what it's called? Yeah, thank you. Yeah, and it's got the little pre-order figure as well. I didn't get that, dude. Yeah, um, I didn't pre-order, but the guy at GameStop was handing them out for free, and it's um. It's a little figure of Goku, like Super Saiyan God or whatever. Super Saiyan Blue. That would have been cool. That would have been cool. Yeah. All right, well, what did you think of Fighter Z, man? We played online a couple of times. Yeah, uh, dude, I love it. Um, side-scrolling fighters, like uh, Street Fighter style, like this is, are not really my specialty. I'm more of like a, 
I don't know. More like three D, three D, so caliber you type get with like melee and games like that. Um, that's right. more of what I play. But I, I am really enjoying this one. And if I was going to learn how to play this style of fighting game, it would definitely be this game that makes me want to you know learn and actually do better. Whereas the others, I'm kind of like, eh. Well, it, it's a wild fighting game. I mean, three on three battles are pretty strategic. I mean, it's hectic. You know, all kind of stuff on the screen at once. You I mean it's, it's tough. You know, what I mean, but. It's casual. It it could be tough if you're trying to play on a tournament level, but I'm more of a casual guy, so I have fun playing against you guys. But that's you know I wouldn't go in on a tournament level with it. You know it's just too much going on at once. But, but definitely a good game. It's going to put Arc Systems on the map because they've been out here making Guilty Gear games and Blast Boot games for years, and no one's noticed them. So now they'll notice them now. So I'm happy with that. So yeah. All right. Oh, my turn again. Your turn again. Yeah. Uh, I, this is a rebuy, but happy to have it again. Contra Four, yeah. You see that? Huh? Oh, I have that. That's a good one. It is, dude. Uh, it's hard as hell, but it's still fun. Our buddies from Way Forward, the creators of Shante, uh, helped develop this game. So, trying to yeah, find very a cool. Copy. I have it right over here somewhere. But yeah, it's a good game. You know, that game goes for I, like forty, fifty bucks now. I know, right? I just noticed something cool in your background. You have a Batman Arkham Knight poster with her face to face. It looks so badass. Yeah, I got that. Um, in case y'all didn't know, Walmart gives out free video game magazines uh, every month. Oh. And you every know, Walmart? Huh? Every yeah, Walmart? Almost. Uh, yeah. I mean, it depends on if they have them in stock. But yeah, every Walmart. It's the thing Walmart does. You go to the gaming section and we're like where their strategy guides are. They have yeah. actual full like Game Informer style magazines. And they always come with a poster. That's the poster I got in mind. So, okay, cool. If you're looking for free gaming magazines, uh, Walmart has them. So, all right, cool, cool. Pickups, right? Okay. Uh, uh, one more thing before you start your pickup. Did you beat Batman Arkham City? I mean, Arkham at night. No, I didn't. Did you get far in it? I got pretty far. I didn't beat it yet. And I still don't know did, who the did, who the knight is, like the knight Arkham Knight guy. Did, so, did you did you get to the did you get to a boss fight where you with the Batmobile, like the tunnel race? Um, well, I did a lot of races or. Stuff. Okay, so you didn't get the tunnel battle. Okay, damn, I was gonna. You know, talk right to now I'm, that. I'm going after the uh, the giant bat. Like I'm, I'm on a mission to like. Oh, the man to... bat. Yeah. That's a side mission, but that's very cool though. Okay, yeah, cool. that's what I do. I mostly do side missions, but. All right, what what, what do you got for us? Okay, well I've got two GameCube games. I'm going to show real quick. Um, these were uh, 99 cents, I think. They're complete. Okay. Star Wars, Clone, something. Yeah, Star Wars, Clone Wars, and Spider-Man 2. I love Spider-Man 2. Very good game. It's the open world one. It's really, it's really yes, good. Yes, I wonder how that looks in HD. I don't know. Yep. Well, you got the, you can find out. You got that new GameCube HD adapter. So. <laughs> I do, man. I do. Very excited. <laughs> All right. So um, next game got here. I'm very happy to have this. I'm going to show off two of them. I got uh, this is from East Asia Soft. I have... Bleed and Bleed 2. These are two games, uh, nice, fantastic nice. side-scrolling shooting games. Yeah. A lot of fun. Uh, the music is fantastic. comes with a soundtrack, art book, uh, certificate. Just very cool. Uh, Play Asia is killing it with the indie releases, man. Physical what, releases. Is, uh, what do those run for, That like a box copy like that? I think it goes for 29 or 34 bucks, maybe. Yeah, that's uh, actually what I paid for my box. It was like 29 bucks. Oh, you got the Vita version. Heck yeah. They're yeah. still I think they're they haven't even sold out of them yet. They have like like maybe twenty more left before they yeah. sell out. Now they're gonna sell but, out. <laughs> but I think they're somebody else is re releasing uh the Curse Castilla in uh in European territories so a physical release. So nice. I, I found that out. But yeah. Bleed and Bleed Two and I also want to show you guys Coma, which is a survival horror game that East Asia Soft is selling. I need that one. And yeah, you you better hop on it, man, because uh, it's it's twenty it's, it's twenty nine dollars, I believe. Very scary game. It's like, it's like Silent Hill if it was a 2D game, pretty much. It's a, well, not Silent Hill. Well, yeah, it's like Silent Hill. You get ported to another world, and the sexy teacher is trying to kill you, and she's trying to kill you brutally. It's like it's pretty crazy, but a lot of fun. All right, so all right. Let's let's check the questions real quick because we got 86 people in here. 86 uh, people. All yeah. right. All right. Cool John. Cool John wants to know what what's a game that you like that you've not played in a long time. I mean, that's got to be like hundreds. <laughs> yeah, definitely Final Fantasy uh, Seven, uh, Final Fantasy in a Valkyrie profile, which I actually started playing recently, like the other day, because I yeah. captured footage for him. 
I was so sad I haven't played those games in years, man. And, I, and just like, wow, this is so amazing going back and playing them. Like even the, even the bad dialogue in Final Fantasy VII, man, I was still like, like just like, wow, I forgot how much I loved that game. I want to play. Uh, this is a game I absolutely loved when it came out, and it's one I want to go back and play again. But I haven't played it since it originally came out. Yes. and I beat it. Yeah, Metal Gear Solid Four. Yeah, Metal Gear Solid Four, man. Oh my god, that game. Amazing. The ending. Oh my god, it was it was it's amazing. But I mean, did you beat it? Yo. Oh yeah. Yeah, that micro the microwave tunnel part, man. It was probably the most one of the most emotional parts in the game. A snake is going through that yeah. tunnel, and the graphics, and man, are so intense. Yeah, it, like, that thing is like it, it's burning him, him up, man. It's like you're like, what the hell, dude? This is this is crazy. They had uh, a, what a crazy scene. They should have they remastered that on PS4 yet? Uh, no, they haven't messed with Metal Gear Solid Four. I, I don't think they really need to. I mean, it, it looks fantastic on the on the PS3. Great, I think I mean it could get away with being a modern day game, really. Yeah, seriously, you know. All right, let's see. Oh yeah, that, I think it's my turn for pickups, right? It's your turn. That's what I was waiting on. <laughs> you know, I think this is my last one. Oh shit! Well, I better bundle my next one. <laughs> yeah, I've been bundling too much apparently. We got Rogue <laughs> Galaxy. Oh, you just got that? That is one of my favorite RPGs of all time. Me and Jason love that game. It's one of our, our one of our tops, man. Uh. Very well done game. Story was awesome. A lot of a lot of these other weird RPG guys say, "Oh, the story was cliche and all that stuff," but that story was badass. Characters you could you could really feel the characters in that game. The the voice acting was really good. Special yeah. moves are good. It's just it's you feel like you're in a live world pretty much with that game because if you're walking around fighting, the characters will actually talk to you. Say, "Hey, maybe you should save your game soon," or you've yeah. been playing a long time. It's pretty funny. Like they break that fourth wall. But cool game, man. Also, okay, so last. Things I'm going to show here all, right. all together. I got Zelda: The Adventures of Link, which is my favorite Zelda game of all time. Uh, happy to have this version of the game. Uh, I mean, the Game Boy Advance version because that's that say better save system. Very awesome game. Just I A can't lot say enough about it. I don't like Zelda, the sequel to the original Zelda. I actually like it because you still get the overworld, and then I actually enjoy like the side-scrolling aspect to it. I think it gives it like a multi-dimensional feel. You know what I mean? And not only that, it's a, a true sequel to the first Zelda game. See, yeah. Link finds out that the Zelda that he saved in the first game wasn't the real Zelda. I mean, she is a Zelda, but she's not the main Zelda. The main Zelda has been put to sleep, and you're trying to save her in this game. Uh, it's, a, it's it's such a good game. Uh, it's just, oh my god, I can't say nothing about it, but definitely yeah. pick it up. I like up, the uh, RPG it feel it has to it when you can like interact with all the AI and stuff. Yep, level up and get yeah. rest and everything at the end. Uh, also, so I got Undernight and Birth recently. I've been telling my buddy Josh to get the PS3 version. Yeah. Uh, because for 10 bucks, I got this recently. A great fighting game that nobody knows about because the name is weird. Undernight and Birth. Who the hell, what kind of name is that? But well, it's like that other PS3 game, the uh, Under Defeat on PS3. I think Defeat is the shooting game, but I know you're that's a, that's a, a shooting a weird, game. But I know you're, yeah, weird name. It's a weird name, dude. Like, how, how are you gonna know what that is? Yeah, and the last game is a is a Dynasty Warriors type, Fate Excelia the um, Umbral Star uh, for the Vita. It's like a Dynasty Warriors type beat 'em up. Yeah, very cool game. I haven't really played it yet. I've seen it played, and to come in this big ass box like this is pretty cool. I just wish this box came with a soundtrack because I like. I don't really like art books as much as I do soundtracks, yeah. but still, it's still pretty heavy. And I think it came with a shirt too, <laughs> or something. Yeah, or maybe you know. I mean, I, I bet you I can't put it on, but still, it's kind of oh, some kind of cloth. You know, here, you wipe your face off with it or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> some is cars. there any gameplay on the back? Like, does it show any screenshots? Yeah, yeah, I still some gameplay. You wanna, can you, I don't know if you can see it good. I looked at that game the other day, and it was like super cheap, and I didn't get it. You didn't get this one? The, they had the big box for cheap. Pick it up. Yeah, Thank I didn't trade that. for this one. Man, you got you you went you turn you got cheapskate mode on, man. Uh, I do, man. You're like, I, stay, ah. I stay in that mode. I, hey, I hear you, man. It's tough because buying games, man. You know, games are meant to be cheap for us. You know, we were used to buying games for good prices, so it's hard to pay a certain amount for games. But anyways, guys, we hope you enjoyed our pickups part. Yep. And now me and Josh are going to talk about a little bit of the YouTube uh, crisis that happened recently. Uh, we were we, I, I made it past the YouTube crisis. And Josh, you want to tell what happened with you with that? Like, how yeah. Did it so play? essentially, I'm sure most of you know by now. You've probably gotten the email. Um, YouTube is going to be starting February 20th, 
Um, if you have not got a thousand subscribers or have at least four thousand hours of watch time on your channel, uh, you will be losing the ability to monetize your videos. Um, so that it, it sucks. I, I understand why they do it, why they they're doing this though, because um, they're trying to weed out some of the like spam channels that just steal other people's videos. And, yeah, um, it's happened to me. It's like those people that have like two million views on a video, but they have like fifty subscribers, you know. And all they're doing is like downloading other people's videos and re-uploading them, you know. Mm -hmm. um, so that's going to be taking place February twentieth, and from what I've heard, ninety percent of YouTubers are going to be losing their ability to monetize. Ninety um, percent! Wow, that's a big deal because that means if, they, if we lose ninety percent YouTubers, guys will that have made their they made it like us. Uh, we'll probably see a more of a better return in our yeah. channel content. So there's pros I mean? and so. cons. Uh, like you're saying, for like the pro for people that do make it, it's gonna be better because there will be more ad revenue to go around. And then also the way YouTube works is if your channel is monetized, you get seen more in the search engine or recommended. Whereas opposed yeah, to if your channel is not making YouTube any money then they're not going to really, you know, support it or, mm -hmm. you know, put it out there as much. So a lot of people are saying, oh, well, y'all, you know, you just want money. That's all. So I don't care. I don't need money. But if you're a content creator and you want your videos yeah. to be seen, even if you don't want to get the money, you want to be monetized because it helps your channel grow and spread and helps right. YouTube pushes your channel. So it's more than just money. But it's, um, it's a big deal. And I, I just barely passed the threshold the other day i'm at like four thousand and twenty five hours now you made it though i got nine days to go so <laughs> you made it so that's badass man uh reason re reason we brought this up because uh josh uh, is josh the retro gaming maniac is it, josh my buddy josh is a true uh content creator you know he cares about youtube he makes good videos and we were just worried because he fell under the, he, he you had fell under it man i was, I was worried about your channel yeah. but uh Thank goodness you made it, man. It's just guys like you should not have to worry about that, man. You know, because you, you, you love YouTube. You like making videos, and uh, you're a true, you're a true content creator, man. So, anyways, beside all that, I'm glad you made it. Uh, hopefully, YouTube doesn't have anything else crazy they're gonna throw at everybody. Uh, uh, it's just it was it, I was worried for a lot of my friends, man. But I'm glad you made it, man. Yeah, I'm glad, dude. I was, I wasn't worried about losing the money, but I didn't want to lose like. The, the tools that you can use to like yeah, to uh, like your own edit your own thumbnails or use edited thumbnails or other tools. Yeah, I can't there's there's they. a few tools that you would have lost, but it's also like the way I see it is like being a small YouTuber, the odds are already like stacked against you. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So it's just another hit you take or another obstacle you have to overcome now. So it kind of sucks, right. and um, I understand why they do it though. But uh, you know, Twitch. Um, Speaking of these new rules and all that, Twitch has just released some new rules um, that they're rolling what? out with. Yeah, they're going what to be it? starting this thing where they're going to monitor not only what you do on Twitch, but they're going to try to find any other social media apps or networks that you're on, and they're going to monitor you. And if you're doing something they don't agree with or something that's like a hate speech or anything like that, they're gonna sever, yeah. They're gonna sever ties with you on Twitch, even if you're doing something outside of Twitch on like Facebook. That, that I now that I think about, it, I actually agree with that because somebody could be hella cool on Twitch, and then they're like, there's some kind of racist killer or something like that. If you're talking all this crazy stuff, they need to like be associated. Yeah, so that makes sense. Uh, that's actually a good rule, actually. So uh, yeah, I it, feel bad. I feel it, bad they have to search uh, other your social media to see what else you're doing. <laughs> but that's only for the guys who are really successful. I would think that they they would do all that on, uh, because they represent the channel. So well, I mean, they're, they're... I understand both sides. I, I understand people feeling like, you know, privacy being violated. But I also understand Twitch is doing this to prevent some kind of major screw up in the future that could happen. You know, by they having their you know partners with this big you know Twitch streamer, then it comes out the next day that he's like a Nazi or something. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, that's bad. They don't want to. They don't want to have that kind of publicity so yeah so definitely so yeah uh that's up that's what's up with the policy changes and stuff uh honestly i think they are good that they're ha they happened i mean i thought they were horrible at first you know because a lot of i was really i was emotional about it because a lot of my friends were in trouble but now a lot of them weren't and they actually made it 
and then now that I'm looking at these policies, they're pretty much YouTube is going back to the way it used to be. So yeah. it's kind of it's kind of good. So uh, it is good, definitely. It's it's, but, uh, it's good. It's just it's a change, and a lot of people are. It is going to affect people negatively, but it's for the better, you know. I think. It's, yeah, they just got to keep working, and they'll come up. You know, what I mean, you got to go back to the old school stuff when I, when other channels will help other channels, give them a shout out, get them noticed. That kind of stuff helps out, or make really good videos that people will like. Yeah, you know, get in touch with uh, other YouTubers, um, be friends, do collaborations, go on social media, try to, you know, um, upload regularly, stuff like that. Um, yeah. All things which I need to do better. <laughs> I think uh, a lot of people, like, I think it's going to hurt a lot of those services, like, uh, if you're part of, like, like, something like Streamwave. Is that what it's called? Streamwave? or Streamwave, yeah. And one, a couple other ones. What else are out uh, there? I'm I'm partnered with the Curse Network. You got Screenwave. You've got um... see anybody anybody who doesn't have that many subscribers and they're they're like under like that. They're probably gonna lose. They're gonna lose it with those companies as well. So it's gonna hurt those companies yeah. a lot, a lot actually. Yeah, it's gonna hurt the YouTuber and the uh, companies are gonna be suffering too because you know. Yeah. So I'm, I'm, I'm about curious that. to see what they do. Like if they're gonna be changing any of the way that they do business to try to keep up because you figure. 90% of YouTubers, um, even if you're only making a dollar a month, you know, there's millions of YouTubers. That adds up really quick, you know what I mean? So, mm -hmm. Exactly. Uh, so, what else? Another thing we wanted to talk about is cartridge versus CD. Yeah. Uh, uh, I am a CD person. I love uh, CDs over cartridges, and it wasn't always like that. It's just, uh, we're going to go into it. But, uh, I would say pretty much the reason why I like CDs more is because you can do so much more on the CD, more room for stuff. Music-wise, uh, game-wise, you can just add so much more stuff on there. Uh, cartridge is uh, cartridge could almost do the same thing as a CD, I would say, but it, it just makes it more expensive. And uh, I don't know. I just I'm just more of a CD person. Josh, what, what do you think, man? Are you more of a CD or a cartridge person? Well. Before I answer that, let's congratulate uh, Joel from Media Glitch. His channel passed the threshold. So, I, 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 was he was he in any danger? I don't know, but he made it. He says he made it, so that's good. <laughs> I guess oh, he made I it. He was say, in... I, there's, no, there's no way in hell Media Glitch <laughs> would be behind in that because I, I wasn't even worried about them. But yeah. that channel has that, his channel has like some of the highest production values I've ever seen for any YouTube channel. I mean, seriously, it's, it's shocking. That no one has really like you know seen Media Glitch, you know. Yeah. Um, Speaking, I of, noticed that. Check out Media Glitch. He's in the comment section, everybody. So if you're not subscribed, check out his channel and subscribe. Mm -hmm. If you remember, like the old uh, G4 TV style um, video game shows, mm -hmm. that's what his channel's like. It's really great, and it's like a throwback to what G4 TV used to be. So he puts out three videos a week, sometimes yep. even more. I mean, good content reviews. I mean, he, he puts it out there. Simple as that. I have no idea why his channel's not on the top, but I have a feeling 2018 is going to be a good year for him. His you channel's know, something's going to pick up. up. Dude. It's going gonna, it's gonna... to. He's going to blow up, man. He's going to forget about us, man. It's the way it is. <laughs> like, you Josh said, who, Reggie, Reggie, who are who? you? <laughs> who are those guys? No, I'm just kidding. But yeah, Media Glitch, check him out, guys. Uh, yeah, he's in the comments. Talk with him. He's got yeah. good content. Uh, so going back to the CD and cartridge thing, I yeah. mean, Josh, I, um, like I said, I'm more of a CD guy. I'm okay, so like I like both, but I feel like in the in the past the c d was the way to go. You could always fit more data uh, more games, more music, more video cutscenes, everything on a c d you know that was part of the problem that the sixty four had was the um when it was up against the PlayStation is the PlayStation could have like full soundtracks and full motion mm -hmm. video and all that I mean you got like all kind of you know hours worth on a disc whereas the 64 had to cut a lot of that down or super compress it to where it was like really like bad looking graphically and just really mm -hmm. degraded the quality but i think these days i think personally discs are going out i don't think they're going to be around much longer and i think what are you going to replace them with they're going to replace it with either i hate to do it a digital which i don't want Good. and cartridge based and I prefer mm -hmm. cartridge because you still get the physical copy. Mm -hmm. But also, these days, uh, cartridges and or SD cards, they're not even cartridges, or SD cards, right? Right. That's what a Switch cartridge is, SD card. That's fine. They're, they're so small these days, and they're so cheap to make. 
and you can fit so much data on that. Like they have like literally one one terabyte, a thousand gig SD card you can buy. Um, now Blu-ray holds what fifty gigs? A Blu-ray disc? Something fifty like to that. eighty gigs or something like that. Yeah, I can't 50, remember. between fifty and eighty gigs, and uh, you can put. I mean, you can put sixty-four gigs oh, in just yeah. a little cartridge this big, and it's also you got to look at the read and write speeds. Yes, the, that's what I'm um, going to next. Yep, the read and write speeds on a cartridge are super fast, and um, where on a Blu-ray, well, out the Blu-ray, the, the Blu-ray player on the PS3 and the PS4, I think they're two speeds, so that's really bad, very yeah. bad actually, guys. So that's why a lot of these games, especially the PS4, the games mostly install themselves onto the hard drive mm -hmm. with only partially of the game playing off the disc because it would be so the load times would be horrible. I mean, we're talking about going back to 3DO Panasonic load times. Oh man! Uh, if they, you know, like that, if they were going off the disc. Uh, but uh, I get it; they did it to keep costs down. But I figure by now, since the PS3, the technology has been out for the Blu-ray for the PS3 came out with came out 2006. 2006. They should have yeah. a higher speed. They should have a higher speed uh, disc Blu-ray player in that sucker, man. Period. I mean, but. Yeah, I mean, it is what it is. I, I hope, I hope, like future systems all have Blu-ray players because, like, you know, I still watch a lot of movies myself. Right. Um, and another thing you get with the cartridges is, is you get the right speed. Obviously, we talked about that. You get the physical mm -hmm. copy. Um, much more data, you know, can be put on that. But mm -hmm. um, I don't know how much smaller they can start making these SD cards, though. You know what I mean? <laughs> 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 as long as they can fit a lot of room on them, I, I'm about the physical media, Josh. And if, if games go digital, I will lose interest in them. I just won't. I will not buy them anymore. I mean, I, I have so many games to play for a lifetime. I mean, I may play some games. But I'm not going to go out and break an arm to buy them. I mean, I, the only thing, the always thing about digital games for me was that uh, if a game is digital and you have a physical copy, the digital should be cheaper, right? Yeah. Because you know it should be. Well, they haven't done that practice. What they did is they found out that they could rip people off because people were, were pretty much idiots when it comes to stuff. They don't really investigate stuff. So they started buying all this digital stuff saying this is a great way to play these games when that stuff should have been cheaper than the physical copy, at yeah. least, to make it worth the difference between the two. So they made a lot of money off people doing that. Now they really want to go all digital if possible, but I don't think that's going to happen. I think it's gonna. I, 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 it could happen. I mean, maybe it is gonna happen. I don't. It's not gonna happen in the next generation cycle. I don't think, but it's possibly coming. But when that happens, Josh, that's when you just sit back and you kind of play the games you have. Like, wow, well, I already have enough. Yeah, I mean, you play got a backlog like of games, you know. Exactly. So uh, that's when you, even if you're not playing the games right now, I mean, you'll you'll get to that point in your life where you're like, you know what. I'm not going to buy any more of these games anymore. They're not really. I'm not really buying them because I don't own them anymore. And that's a big thing with me. You don't own digital games. You, you buy. You rent. You buy, the rights to play them, which is the. Which is if you look at the copyrights for certain games, that's what it, all of them pretty much digital. They say that. So, yeah. I think. Like, yeah, so, I don't like you said. I don't like the whole idea of going like purely digital, no. but like I think they're going to start partially going digital. But I don't mm -hmm. think our internet right now is to the point where they can just totally. That's forget. the problem. Like me and Jason like, talked about that. In the U.S., our internet is like garbage. If you go to somewhere like Japan, they have it's... amazing internet speeds. It's like it's ridiculous. Wow. Over here, like this would be our like our internet compared to Japan is like dial-up. That's how fast their internet is. Why, why can't we get some service like that over here, man? Because they want to make people pay a whole bunch of money for it. Well, you know, like, these, uh, these places have, like, monopolies. You know, you got you can either have Comcast or, or where I live, or you can have Comcast, or you can have, like, you know, I don't know, AT&T. Time, time Warner. Time Warner yeah, or something that's all else. you get because they have monopolies, you know. So and they control. Uh, it sucks. Yeah, it does suck, man. But, man. But, uh, guys, uh, hopefully uh, – uh, we want to ask you some more questions before we end this. Uh, yeah. But, uh, yeah, that's what, we, that's what we think about cartridge and CD. And, Josh, I agree with you what you said about it. I don't mind going with SD cards, but as long as they are done properly, done right. Yeah, and as uh, long as they don't – like you were mentioned the other day when we talked, SD cards, like you said, are fine, but are they going to start charging a lot more for them? Like are we going to see $60 games turn into $80 games? You know what I mean? Exactly. Exactly. That's a problem. I could, like, I agree with you with that could be an issue. Um, yeah. But, but 
yeah, who knows? Because, like, with cartridges or SD cards, you don't have any moving parts. Like, you don't have to worry about a disk drive messing up or a True. laser going out. You know what I mean? Right, right, exactly. So, I don't know. Uh, it depends on what they decide to do. <laughs> yeah, and hopefully the people won't just bend over for anything. They'll put their foot down and say, hey, you, you know, don't do this. We're not going to pay for this. They'll, they'll stand am, up. But I am happy how people responded to uh, Battlefront 2. Star Wars oh. Battle- yeah. I'm glad Hold on a second. Got to unlock a loot down. box. <laughs> <laughs> That's horrible. <laughs> oh, my God. I can't believe they were ripping people off like that, dude. That's horrible. And that, and that game has such a cool commercial. You seen the commercial with the, the two kids, the girl and the boy, and they're, they're like they're growing up together. They oh, play and Star they're Wars. It, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that commercial was so like heartwarming because it's funny. And then that game had that problem. It, that's the right game, right? What I'm yeah. talking about. They had the same problem. Yeah. That's messed up. So and that's EA who published it, right? Huh? EA, yeah. Was it? Yeah, EA, man. They need to get their act together, man. You can't charge everybody for it. Yeah, I'm not even going to go on to all that. That'll be another podcast. Maybe <laughs> Joel will talk with us about it in, when he's on next time. Yeah, Joel. Uh, um, Joel, Joel from Media Glitch, guys. Check him out. Yep. We mean it. You matter of fact, stop what you're doing right now. Media Glitch in your search bar. Subscribe to his channel. Yep. And that's, that's all there is to it. And you're going to be in for a ride. Great content. Cool dude. Dude, I like your hat, man. My hat? Oh, the yeah. Retro Gaming Maniac? <laughs> the retro, I just noticed that, dude. That's badass. Man. I need to get a Radical Reggie hat. Yeah, I've had this Be one purple. for a while. A friend of mine on, on uh, Facebook, um, yeah? er- Eric from uh, Sidewalks and Tables, got me this hat. That's a cool name, Sidewalks and Tables. I like that. Yeah, SWAT, Sidewalks <laughs> and Tables. So, guys, any more questions you have for us? We're ready to answer, uh, answer a couple more questions before we uh, get ready to head out. All right, let me take uh, a look here. Let's see. Any questions? Let me go back and see if we missed anything. Uh, let's see. <laughs> uh, Joel says uh, Media Glitch says it's going to go all digital. In fact, there's not going to be systems anymore. After the next generation, everything will go to be in like Netflix service or the Sony channel. It's Maybe. possible. Yeah, I mean, I can see that happening. I just. But, Joel, remember what we said, though. If they do that service, they have to do higher speed internet connections for America. Yeah. People would not want to do the deal with it. They want, they want fast connection. Like, when Netflix, the longer it takes, how long it takes to load up a Netflix movie is how long it should take to download a game. Exactly. It needs to be. And that's what, like, in Japan, from what I've heard, it's, it's, it's quick like that, dude. They have, like, they can download, like, a thousand gigs in a matter of, like, a wow. minute. Wow. It's ridiculous. Uh, let's see. What do we think about Eternal Champions on the Sega? That's a game that I like. Lar- I like Larson, but that's about it. That game is broken the it's, way it controls. It's a mediocre game, but I have a lot of nostalgia for it. I used to rent it a lot, so I actually still. The fatalities like it. are brutal. Yeah, it, it's. You it's, ever played? Huh? You ever you ever played the Sega CD version? Uh. Uh-uh. The Sega it? CD version has a fatality when you get knocked down this freaking tower. And the tower has all these these traps as you're falling down, and tearing your body up like the blades and stuff smashing oh, you. Your body, cool. you just your body get mangled even more as you go down it. It's a brutal like fatality. It's pretty awesome, but a game was always hard to control for me. But uh, it's a cool game, nostalgia wise. Uh, Krillin's got a, a question here. He wants to know what it would take for you to get a switch. <laughs> Some money. Shoot. Yeah, right. <laughs> M- money is tight right now. Of course, I'm I'm able to pay all my bills and do all that stuff, but extra stuff. I know it looks like, you know, possibly I have a lot of money when we do our pickups and stuff, but I'm just able to negotiate properly. I'm able to trade stuff off and know how to, you know, get stuff for cheaper. You know what I mean? Simple yeah. as that. Plus, you know, you uh, getting... a lot of those pickups are from months. You know, they can be months ago as well. So. Yeah, they add, they add up. Yeah. And uh, as far as the uh, Switch, I want to get one because Nick was just here playing one, as you guys saw. And uh, I want to get one. I just I just have to wait for the right time, man. Uh, it's 250, 250 bucks, right, or 300 yeah, two two ninety nine. Yeah, it, it's just hard for me to justify it right now when bills are so tight, especially recovering from Christmas. You know, family, I have yeah. to carve trouble and all that stuff. I got to bills. Yeah, I got to take all that in consideration. So uh, it's hard to just drop three hundred bucks on something. You know what I mean? So I don't know. If, I don't know if y'all can hear it though. It's like pouring outside at my place right now. No, I mean, I can't hear shit. Oh well, good. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, let's see, I saw a question. I want to get to that one. Uh, man, here we go. Uh, name, name Ramer. He wants to know if we're running out of room for our game collection 
and uh, how are we dealing with it slash any solutions? I, well, I could fit everything in there, but I have to really consolidate not getting box limited editions type stuff. That takes up too much room, and a lot of the limited edition stuff doesn't come with good stuff anyways anymore. Like, I'm, you remember back in the day when Lunar Complete on the game on the Super on the PlayStation came with all that cool stuff with it? Yeah. Nowadays. You, you get hollow boxes when you get games, so I'm, I'm, I really focus on, yeah, just getting the standard edition now because limited edition is just not that great and it costs so much more money. Now, a game like Tales, they give good limit, they put great limited editions together, but uh, yeah, I just go with standard, so I'm not really running out of room. I'm still good, but it is getting a little bit crowded in there. Three people can still chill on there and still be comfortable, so that's good. Um, Tatsumaki wants to know uh, what's your favorite anime. Uh, right now, I would have to see the X series was always is really a top anime I like, and I, it's the only one I still own. But I do I do like Nadia in the, the Secret of the Blue Water series. That was great. Uh, but I haven't watched a lot of anime in a long time. I, I currently I just watched uh, Hyper. I mean, uh, Iria, which is like six episode OVA. I watched that, and I'm gonna watch a series that my buddy uh, Jason gave me to watch pretty soon. But uh, yeah. That's me. I'm kind of like, I like Dragon Ball, Dragon Ball Z, Super, all that. <laughs> Did you watch last night's episode? Oh, man, I missed it. I'm glad you, oh. I've got to look on Funimation now and see. Don't, Can I spoil, don't spoil it for it? you? No. Yeah, because I know everybody gets triggered about spoilers. I love doing that because people are, <laughs> it shows who gets triggered or not. You know, it's, it seems like in our day and age, like it's a cool thing to get triggered by somebody. Like, spoilers, oh, you ruined it for me. And they, they know damn well they weren't going to watch what you're talking about, man. Yeah. I, I hate that crap. Like, get out of here. People like, just I get triggered in general these days for some reason. It, it's the thing to get triggered. Like, yeah, I, talked about, I talked about a UFC fight after it happened, and somebody said, you ruined the fight for me. I said, you ruined it. You didn't even watch it. So what are you talking about? It's not like I'm ruining movies or anything like that. You know, spoilers for movies I get. But for a pay-per-view event, you know, after it happens, this is too, bu- that's too bad, guys. But anyway, sorry. Go ahead. Um, let's see. Seed, any favorite games in the past that you can beat really fast and like playing over and over? Uh, fast? Uh, I would say maybe Mike Tyson's Punch Out. I can always beat that pretty fast, even though I gotten rusty on it because I tried to fight Mike Tyson. I yeah. never would get hit by him in the first round, and now I'm getting knocked out by him in the first round. Like, I get knocked down at least. I can still beat him, but I'm not as good as I used to be. I got to practice some more. One game yeah. that I played like all the time and that I love, um, and I, I used to be able to beat it like all the time, like really quick, was uh, the original Medal of Honor on PS One. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I used to love that game. I still love that game. It's a good game. It's a good game. Very yeah. good game. Uh, yeah, definitely. What else you got, guys? Let's see. Let me look real quick. Um, Jim Anderson wants to know that since you like fighting games, have you ever played a uh, Mugen? Yeah, I have Mugen. My disc is all busted up, so I have to download a new one. But yeah, I've seen Mugen on uh, on PC. It's pretty insane. But uh, man, it, wouldn't that be awesome if they could put that into an official card? Have you seen Mugen before? Uh, I haven't even seen it. Mugen is like a whole bunch of sprites of different fighting game characters, and also like newer games. Like they make sprites for Peter Griffin, the, the evil oh, chicken, wow. and put them in two D, and they fight each other. It's pretty badass. That sounds but, yeah, cool. It's fun. Um, what else this... you got? Dustin Miller wants to know if we miss rental stores. Yeah, I do. I mean, you guys know I do. Blockbuster lanyard, you know. Yeah, I, I'm always them. wearing it. I miss them, but like to be honest, like I don't know if I'd actually use them these days. Like, well, well, the thing with Blockbuster and, and rental stores, they would have certain movies that weren't on streams services. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, they have everything pretty much, so they would have all this unique stuff. And I miss going there, talking to the people who work there, who love talking about movies. You know yeah. what I mean? Uh, it was just a very chill place to be at. Probably a chill place to work at as well. Hey, thanks for watching, Joel. Um, yeah, we'll definitely have you on next podcast. Have a good one. He's Joel the Mole, man. Love you, man. Yeah. Check out Media Glitch. I, gu- I guess we're going to wrap it up, guys. Um, have any last-minute questions? Uh, no, not really. Give, matter of yeah. fact, give us a thumbs up, guys. Uh, if, you, if you're in the chat, give us a thumbs up. Yeah, you know go ahead I mean? and hit like, that uh, like button if you enjoyed the uh, the podcast. Let us and, know. Uh, feel free to subscribe to my channel if you want. It's in the description. 
Um, uh, we'll also put in the, in the description of this video what we talk about in the sections and everything because I think we've been talking for an hour now, right? Yeah, so we have. We'll put it in the descriptions what we talk about at certain points so people who, you know, want to know what we're because we, we're all over the place when we talk in videos like podcasts. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, we'll put a, I'll put a little description in there so everybody knows cool. what we uh, covered in this podcast. But uh, well, also before I go. If you guys are all here, the Retro Gaming Maniac. This is Josh. Check out his channel. He put out good content. <laughs> I love the guy. You guys need to see what he does, man. He's amazing. And he's dedicated. So if you like me, you know, you'll definitely like the Retro Gaming Maniac. High production values. Uh, he wears a cool hat. Awesome. Thank you. His, his, his Star cool, Wars video. you cool hat. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, check him out. The Retro Gaming Maniac. Awesome, guys. If you anyway, know who Radical Reggie is, make sure you check out Radical Reggie. <laughs> I know, on my own channel. <laughs> but anyways, guys, it's been great talking with everybody. Hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, those thumbs up. Uh, and anything else I want to throw out there? Anything, you got anything for him, Josh? Um, I don't think I don't think so, man. I guess you know, we'll find out and we'll talk oh, about something and, and, on the next podcast. In the, words of, in the words of my buddy Marcus from Retro Game Players, you keep that shit retro. Later on. <laughs> I did <it> with that. <laughs> cool, guys. See you guys later. All right. Thank you guys for watching. We'll see you next time.